Welcome to another camera channel. Today, we're going to be talking about this thing down here, the Blackmagic Web Presenter 4K. Yes, that's right. This is the Web Presenter 4K from Blackmagic. Something I think that not a lot of people have been talking about. If you search for Web Presenter 4K on YouTube, you'll get a lot of videos for the previous version, the Web Presenter HD. I say previous version, it's all a very valid product, uh, but not a lot of people have adopted the 4K for some reason. Maybe they're very happy with their HD model and they don't need the upscaling features that this one has. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably be one of the first people to make a video about this. So yeah, this is the box that it comes with. And literally this is the only thing that comes in the box. There's no power cable, nothing. It's just this unit here. So enough about the box, let's get rid of that. What you will need if you don't have an SDI workflow is one of these. This is an HDMI to SDI 12G. I picked the 12G version because this is a 12G input box, meaning it will accept signals up to 4K 60p. But basically, I don't know what the future holds, so I wanted to be prepared for that. So I bought the 12G version. You can get the 3G version, which does 1080p, but I went with the 12G just to future-proof myself. Although I might pick up some of the 3Gs uh, at a later date. So basically what this box does, it will take an HDMI signal and spit out an SDI signal of the same quality. Um, and this is what I need for this box here because it is only SDI input. So let's talk about why I love this box. Basically, as I said before, it upscales to 4K, which is great for me because I've been relying on a Mac mini and OBS for streams that we do in this studio. And the Mac mini is not powerful enough to do anything higher than 1080. And the video quality just doesn't look as nice um, when it gets onto YouTube. So I was thinking of solutions about how I could get around this problem. And I noticed that Blackmagic have their own 4K encoder right here. And it upscales the signal. So basically, I can send a 1080p signal into this and it will upscale to 4K and YouTube will display a 4K live stream, which is amazing. and. It works, it's brilliant. Uh, the quality of the streams have, has gone up dramatically. There's so much more detail and what you get at the end of it is a 4K watchable uh, like rerun of the live stream. So awesome. I totally can recommend this. I barely described the product, I'm already recommending it. So let's take a look at the back. Right, so what we have on the back, these are the inputs. So we have our power, which is like a kettle plug. Uh, very standard. You will have to get your own because it doesn't come in a box, but that kind of makes sense. But Magic sells stuff around the world, so this is why they haven't included it inside the box. I guess it also saves on the kind of e-waste. Um, or maybe they're just lazy. You can decide for yourself. We also have 12 volt DC input here, and this is like for, I believe, it's for rack solutions, um, stuff with like um, power supplies with batteries and stuff like that, or converted power supplies, uh, which run dedicated inside of rack. And so you can decide to use this kind of plug instead of the kettle plug here. We have our Ethernet input here. Um, it's labeled live stream, which is true, but you can also control it via Ethernet. So yeah, this is where you plug in your internet connection here or into your network. We have USB-C, which says webcam out. This is another way to change settings on the box. It also, um, sends out a webcam signal. So it also shows as a video device on OBS. So you can capture whatever this is outputting and use it for OBS if you want to stream that way for whatever reason, maybe a backup stream of some sort. You can also connect a mobile device like a phone with 4G or 5G via USB and actually stream via your phone data. Uh, we have HDMI monitor out. We'll see this in a bit. I'll have a setup and show you what that is actually showing. It shows like a status page uh, of everything that's going on. Uh, monitor out, SDI, that shows exactly the same thing as the HDMI monitor out. We have SDI in for the signal going into the box, and then SDI loop out, which is exactly the same. It just spits it back out. I don't believe that it up reses or does anything like that. I think whatever signal you put in, it will send it right back out. So you could send that to an additional monitor or an, another recorder or something like that. So yeah, that's a look at the back. So let's plug it in and let's test it out and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so looking at the buttons here, we have a menu button, we have our on-air button, we have an off button, a set button, a call, and a lock button. So what they do basically on-air will start a stream. The menu button gives us access to the menu. Off will stop a live stream. 
set is used with the menu, call, I have no idea what that does, and lock. And lock, when illuminated, will stop these buttons from being pressed, although you can still access the menu. There we go, it turns back to white. We also have a dial here for selecting your options on the thing, and we also have an additional USB-C port on the front there. It's hidden away in there. You can't see it right now, but it is there, I promise. So on the menu, we have our live stream settings here. So we have stream, standard, and platform. To change any of these settings, if you if you flick it, this is only gonna go between pages. We have setup on the other page here where we can see the name, uh, language, software version, and stuff like that. What we're gonna need to do is click the set button here. And then we can actually change some things. So we got YouTube, primary, stream key right there, the quality, live stream on or off, and back to the top there. So we can change this by going here, and then we have options to go on air. Obviously I can click off here, changing to streaming high. We can change all the options like this. I'm gonna set up now. Name, language, version, audio meters, we can change, we can change this uh, to different ones, whatever you want it to be at. Protocol, and then obviously the IP and stuff, that information is listed on the front. So that's really helpful if you need to get the IP very quickly. Um, although I actually don't like using this menu. I find this menu very hard to go through. Uh, using the set button and stuff and, and using this, I much prefer using an app. Although you have slightly less options on there, it definitely, to me, um, definitely way easier to use the application to change settings. Um, still don't know what call does. If you know what call does, let me know. Let's take a break from that boring menu and have a look at my setup here. So this is how I usually shoot in the studio. I have my multi view on a screen to the right of me. I'm running mix effect on iPad. I've got companion running. And here's a little Raspberry Pi with Playout B on it. Here is where the web presenter 4K lives. And the display is on the TV to the left of me here. And if I press the on air button, you can see it streams. Simple. So here's a setup of showing how the web presenter 4K works. Uh, it's actually quite complicated. There's lots of cables going around. Uh, I'll try and explain this app in a little bit. But first, we need to download a program or an app from the Blackmagic website. So if you go over to blackmagicdesign.com, uh, you'll get the website here. And then we need to go over to support and scroll down a little bit. And we're going to look in the streaming and encoding section. So click on there. And the latest one is Web Presenter 3.0. So actually from last July, uh, or the, the July just gone. So we, we'll download that either on Mac OS X or on Windows, whichever one you choose. I use Mac OS X, so I'm gonna download that one. And I've actually already installed it uh, because I have mine working already. You don't actually have to install the software, but it's useful if you wanna change settings a bit more quickly and make sure that everything's working. So uh, once you've got that installed, plug in the power and an ethernet cable, and hopefully if they're on the same network, so the device that you're using, like computer or Mac, is on the same network as your web presenter 4K, it should automatically detect it as mine has over here. And as you can see, it gives you some status text here, like there's no live stream going on. This would show the duration if it was streaming, the platform that I've selected, and also the status of the, the bit rate. Uh, so you can click on here and it will give you some options that you can change. So video output, you can select between any of these for your output. So what's great about this box is that it's gonna up convert whatever your signal goes in to whatever you choose. For this demonstration, I've picked 4K, so 2160p, 23.98 frames per second. Uh, usually when I'm working, I actually use 30p instead. But for this example, I'm just gonna use the 2398. You've got a button here to load in streaming settings if you've already done them before. Um, and then we have some options that you can choose between Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter slash Periscope, Restream IO. Um, server, primary, secondary, that's that's related to YouTube, which server it would go to. Uh, you've got your stream key here, and then you've also got quality. And um, I've left it on streaming high. Uh, you do have other options like hyperdeck high, 
hyperdeck medium, hyperdeck low. What you'll do, what you will see is this will increase the bit rate of what it encodes and streams out. Um, so pick whichever one you want. For most streaming services, I guess streaming high is going to be enough. Um, I guess maybe if you were streaming internally to something that you wanted to record onto, maybe you'd do it hyperdeck high. Um, but yeah, I don't think many people will be doing that. And you have these two buttons here. One is live stream off and one is on air. So if I click this now, it will start broadcasting whatever the signal is in my Web Presenter 4K to my channel. And I've set my live streaming to be private, but I can do it right now. I hit on air. And basically, you can see it locks out the streaming settings. You can't change any of those. But you can change the quality here. So if you think the bit rate is too high for whatever reason, you can turn it down. So that I can click stop there. And let's go look at what is actually on this screen here. So get a little close up. You'll see down here, uh, we got our bit rate number here. We have the duration that was 13 seconds of what actually was streaming. And we have this OK. So I think this is the status of the stream here. So again, I can hit this on air button like this. It says OK. So it's a streaming OK button, uh, streaming OK status. And you can see the little preview image of what's being streamed. So I can just hit off right here to end the stream. So going over to what comes out of the HDMI port on the back, we have this lovely status screen here. And as you can see, we've been doing some things. So some things have been happening. Um, I'll start from the top left. We have our status. We have our status at the top left, which is off and also the duration of the last stream. That just happened, which was nine seconds. We have some information about the live stream. Again, so YouTube, primary server, a part of the key is there. Stream standard is set uh, to whatever you set it at. So mine was 2160p, 23.98 frames, quality streaming high. And this is really nice underneath this. We have this video input, and this basically will show uh, the last six seconds of whatever the box is is seeing or encoding. So uh, if I could change the camera settings, you'd see uh, that the image would slowly update across that graph. It's, it's actually quite cool to see. And then we have our input standard. So this is the information that's going into the Web Presenter 4K. I'm converting the output of a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera 4K. I'm sending it into one of the 12G HDMI to SDI conversion boxes from Blackmagic. And this is outputting our input standard, which is 1080p, 23.98, which is why I set the stream settings to be the same frame rate. It can actually change the frame rate if you want, but I've tried to set them to be the same for this example. We get the colimetry uh, status, so it says BT709, so Rec709 standard there. SDI, we're not sending, no information is coming from the camera over SDI, so otherwise it would probably show some information there. We also have time code come from the camera, and that's definitely not the right time. So I don't know why my phone thinks it's that time in the morning. Uh, closed captions, uh, I guess if there was some information there about that, that would be there. And then we have some other information about the signal. And if you want to know more about what that actually means, uh, Doug Johnson Productions, you should go check out his channel. He's very good at explaining all this stuff. He's like a complete expert at this. I'm not. I'm just someone who helps people stream on YouTube most of the time. Uh, so. Below that whole panel, we have audio input. And this is kind of similar to what the video uh, preview was doing above it. And so this is showing the last six seconds of the audio input. And this is actually using the internal microphone of the camera, because that's what it's set to. If it was set to this mic, it would be a bit different. Uh, but if I clap, it should be loud enough to pick up on the camera. And you can see those peaks there of the clapping. And it's, it's nice to see what's been happening with the audio over the last six seconds. So. If you have any problems, if the sound suddenly dies, you could probably see it's not going out on stream or anything like that. Or if it's too hot, you'll also see it there. Uh, we have some more information. So sample frequency, emphasis, uh, source locked, word length, origin, all that stuff. It's, frankly, I don't really know what that means. So uh, I'm just going to ignore that. We also have time of day. Again, that's definitely not the time. <laughs> And then we have this L and X kind of representation of audio. And like I said, Doug Johnson Productions explains this very well. L is basically like uh, information, and X is no information there. And then, yep, sample address. And th th this is not really relevant to us uh, because we're not, that none of that information is coming from the camera over SDI. Um, so, yeah. Uh, to the right, we have a lovely big preview of what is actually going out on stream or what is being encoded by the Web Presenter 4K. So I really like that. 
Um, then to the right of that, we have audio meters. Again, this is only using the internal mics from the Blackmagic camera, which is just over there. Uh, so it can pick up my claps and a bit of my speech, but you can see a nice representation. You'll see if your audio is clipping or whatever uh, like that. And then we have data rate, in, uh, so bit rate in megabits per second, and then the cache. And the cache is basically, when you hit stream, you'll notice most of the time, at least from my in my experience, it will cache around 3%. So if I can hit the on air now, uh, so it goes down to 3%. And this is just it encoding that data and sending it out. And 3% is fine, uh, it's pretty good. If you, I, I noticed that we had one, only one problem uh, with this, where the internet connection, I think the, the router uh, decided that we were obviously sending way too much information uh, through that Ethernet port and decided to shut us down uh, for some reason. Don't know why. But um, yeah, you'll see that cache slowly creep up when it isn't able to send that information out. And it, when it gets to 100%, that's usually like, I think it's a minute or 90 seconds. It's around that amount of time, I think, depending on the standard in, in, what, you're, in what you're streaming. Um, so if you get that in the connection back, it will go through the cache and keep streaming that to the service. So I'm just going to end this again. And as you can see, when you stop, the cache goes down to zero. And with the data rate, what you'll notice is the amount of megabits per second will change depending on what's on the screen. So if it was a black screen, nothing's really going to, there's like no data it's transmitting. So the more complex the scene is, if the information that you're outputting is changing constantly, you'll notice that that data rate will fluctuate. Um, so this is good. I know I can stream around 30 megabits per second easily. I think I did higher before, and there wasn't really a problem. Um, but yeah, so this is what comes out on the monitor HDMI port on the back here. And then on, on this channel here, we have um, just the SDI loop. So I don't think that this is 4K at the moment because it's taking in 1080. So I don't think it upscales over the SDI loop. I can't confirm that because I don't have um, a Blackmagic 12G you know, HDR video monitor, uh, which tells you what information is coming in. So I can't confirm or deny that, but that's just my assumption that it's looping out whatever goes in and not um, changing whatever comes in to your streaming settings and sending that over SDI. I believe that is the correct one. And if I uh, disconnect that loop out and put it onto monitor instead, we will see. Here we go. We'll see we get the, exactly the exact same information um, out as monitor on the SDI as we do on the HDMI, and it looks exactly the same. So I'm going to sort that back to the loop out. So that's a little bit of an overview about how this works. I personally really like it. I've had uh, great success with this. It's definitely improved the look of the live streams that I've been doing because this Mac Mini down here can't handle any 4K streams via OBS. Uh, so I've been limited to only outputting at HD. And uh, yeah, this is amazing because being able to watch the stream back in 4K is great for clients. Um, and just as it's streaming out, the quality just looks better. And although I haven't actually figured out how to watch the stream in actual 4K, because um, YouTube is only giving me the settings to watch it in 1440p, um, after everything's been processed, you do get that 4K stream at the end. So I personally think it's a brilliant product. I'm really happy that I spent the money to do this because it just increases the quality so much. So if you're interested in getting one of these, check out the links in the description box below. There'll be affiliate links there to Amazon where you can pick this up. And if you do pick this up via the links in the description, you'll be supporting the channel and that's awesome for everyone. So thanks so much if you do. If, even if you don't, I, I think you're really going to enjoy this product. And yeah, I'm super excited for putting this into a rack and having it all nice and tidy and put away. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Uh, share it with someone who you think might find this interesting or is interested in the Web Center 4K. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.